At first glance, the scanner function seems like a simple way to scan in data from the user, right? However, it doesn't always behave as expected, especially when working with characters. Well, the first thing that you may not know is that scanf actually has a return value, and that value is the number of things that scanned in successfully. So given this program, we would expect the return value of this function call to be one, because we are scanning in one thing here. Similarly, if we have this, we would expect a return value of three, since we're trying to scan in two characters and one integer. Let's see what happens if we were to enter three characters. In this case, we can see that scanf returned two. This is because the first two characters were successfully scanned in. However, since three characters were entered, an integer was not found. So only two things were scanned in successfully. Great, but what if we want the user to scan in continuously rather than just three times? What we need is a way to continually scan in until the user signifies an end of input using control D. And well, we can actually use our return value to accomplish this. Here, we can see that we are checking that a character was successfully scanned in on each iteration of the loop, and we only continue scanning in while that is true. Let's run through the code with some input. When the first scanf runs on line 7, the user types A and presses enter. Scanf reads the input, returns 1, and the loop condition on line 8 evaluates to true. The program then prints scanned character A and calls scanf again on line 10. Hmm, that's odd. Why did it print scan character new line? That's not what we were expecting. Well, here's the catch. When the user types A and presses enter, that gets read into scanf successfully, but the new line character is left hanging on the input buffer. So when scanf is called again, it's gonna read that new line on the input buffer instead of a new character. You see white space characters like spaces and new lines are just regular characters on the ASCII table. If scanf is expecting a character, it'll happily read those spaces and new lines unless we tell it otherwise. In many cases, we don't wanna deal with this extra white space, so we can instruct scanf to ignore it by adding a space for 4% C in our format string. So taking a look back at our example, let's add a space before the percent %c and see if that changes things. Just like before, when the first scanf runs on line seven, the user types a and presses enter. Scanf reads the input, returns one, and the loop condition on line eight evaluates to true. The program prints scan character a and calls scanf again on line 10. The user then enters b and the process repeats. The loop condition is checked, evaluates to true, the character is printed, and another input is scanned. And the same happens when the user enters C. Then, when the user presses Control D, scanf detects the end of input and returns negative one, making the loop condition on line eight false, which causes the loop to exit. We'll use this return value instead of checking for when scanf does not equal EOF to control the loop, because it not only detects EOF, but also lets us know if any other input errors occurred. Finally, the message end of input received prints and the program terminates. So we can see by simply adding a space for 4% C in scanf, we can handle user input in a way we expect by ignoring unwanted white space. And that's it. We've seen how scanf can handle user input, how unwanted white space can cause issues, and how adding a space before percent %c can help fix those issues. We also explored how scanf's return value lets us loop through user input until control D is pressed. Now you know how to scan in efficiently and handle input properly in C.